Hello guys, how are you? Big man, how are you? Have you been away? Have you been here or what? Indoors? Have you? Have you been sick? Really? Was it bad? Wow. When was that? Chaka and Tocolino's trying to get away from near side pickup. He's trying to get away from Nico Pieres. And look at this Tocolino. 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 Surely could be Tocolino. Beautifully done. Pieres couldn't catch him. Tocolino's on a quick one. And they're back in the hunt here.
Good morning to everyone around the world and in particular to Eddie Arida, life playing member of this club who back in 1981 presented the Phoenician Cup and were playing for the final today after five teams entered this tournament. The two teams here in the final, OJ Caliente in the white, Mad Dogs in the green. OJ Caliente, number one, Anna Escobedo, two, Terence Lent, three, Johnny Good, number four, John Paul Clarkin. As OJ Caliente in the form of Johnny Good took possession, sends it down towards the target. The backhand comes in strongly there by the number three for Mad Dogs, Will Harper, with Alan Fall at number two, Henry Porter at number one, and Will Emerson at the back door. And that's going to be bringing it round now for Ojo Caliente. John Paul Clarkin takes possession, loses it. Alan Fall picks it up. Still on the advance. Mad Dogs taking it over the halfway line. The number four, Will Emerson, riding a horse called Sea Biscuit. He's over the top. They all stream over it, and it's going to be picked up now by John Paul Clarkin, former captain of the New Zealand team, still actually playing off six goals, eight goals in the past. John Paul, married to Nina Vesti, born Vesti, now Clarkin, the highest rated lady player in the world. So plenty of experience in that family there as it's picked up now by John Paul. John Paul towards the flags. First goal goes to John Paul Stick on a horse called Nova. Makes it one on the board for Ojo Caliente. 20 seconds is counted by the umpire and then the ball is placed out on the 60-yard point for a knock-in. No ends reversed under these COVID regulations after the goals. Ends are reversed after each chucker. 1-0 now to Ojo Caliente here on the Queen's ground at Smith's Lawn. A beautiful day at the Guards Polo Club. The sun shining. Five teams enter the tournament. These are the last two. Picking it up now for Mad Dogs. Remember, no ends reversed. Advancing down the field for the Mad Dogs. Will Harper has it, pushing it forward. Still, he's advancing down towards that target area. Little problem there with the brakes. Now he manages to control his horse. Hassled by Anna Escobedo. Turning play there by Will Harper. Brings it around nicely. And it's Will Harper on the dark bay called Delight. As he takes it down towards the target, takes the cut shot. Looking good. Has he found the flags? Yes, he has. The e the equaliser comes to the stick of Harper there, and that's one apiece now with John Paul, the goal scorer, down the other end. It will be a hit from that 60-yard point to restart play. The Queen's ground looking absolutely magnificent for this Phoenician Cup trophy. First played for 39 years ago in 1981, will be played in its 40th year next year. Picking it up, bringing it round. Will Emerson. Emerson loses it. Clarkin doesn't get the near side backhand shot. Picked up now for Mad Dogs by Henry Porter. Now he leaves it. Picked up by Will Harper. A bevy of grey helmets there in the Mad Dogs team makes it difficult to pick them up. Here comes the under the next shot. Doesn't quite get the angle. Wide to the right. It goes down to the back line. Knock-in from the back line. Restarting play. Not much whistle yet. In fact, none at all as John Paul Clarkin restarts. Takes it across his goal mouth. And then he makes the faint play left. Now he sends it left. Up for the pass goes teammate Johnny Good. Good. Clever little play by him. Picks it up. Riding a horse called Illicit. There goes John Paul. Good tactics. He goes up for the pass. Good. In comes the number two for Ojo Caliente, Terence Lent, but he can't get there, and it's picked up now by Mad Dogs. The backhand comes in, good pass there to Alan Fall. Alan Fall in the brown helmet over on the far side, advances down the field, leaves it behind. The two players ride each other off, but Mad Dogs get the better of that one, driving it up to the front door. Alan Fall will try and pick it up, but racing through, picking it up very well. Has he found the flags? The number three for Mad Dogs is Will Harper, and he makes it another one, puts the Mad Dogs into the lead. 2-1, lovely field goal there. Good teamwork by the Mad Dogs, racing through from the rear. He picked up the speed, and it was Will Harper on the Dark Bay Delight who managed to get the goal. We've got two minutes remaining in the opening chunk. And I don't think we've had a single whistle yet from our two umpires, Howard Smith and Roddy Matthews, with Ed Judge sitting in the sidelines as the referee. 
John Paul restarts from that 60 yard line minimizing the amount of roll-ins under these regulations ends will only change after each chucker and it's now on the advance down the field pushing it there for OJ Caliente there number three Johnny Good goes for the goal shot has he put yes he has beautiful goal shot there looked up took the shot put it away equalizer to a piece two minutes to run opportunity to go off and change ponies umpires won't wait play restarts 20 seconds is counted ball placed down and away we go great to see such open polo all the players respecting the rules not trying to push their luck too much with the umpires no whistle good 12 goal polo for this Phoenician Cup which I know Eddie Arida who's watching from his home in Beirut will be delighted to see such open play under the neck there by Mad Dogs up to the front door Picking it up is B. Will Emerson. Will Emerson comes through, takes the half shot, doesn't connect correctly. Alan Fall can't swing onto the right away. Picked up now by the number three for Mad Dogs, Will Harper. The goal scorer twice in this chucker loses it. Backing up well is Johnny Good, who picks the ball up after Terence Lent went over the top of it. Now coming down there, avoiding the hook, going down towards the flags. Terence Lent in there comes Will Harper to thwart his play and does just enough to upset him. And that's allowed the ball to run loose. Going to be picked up now for the Mad Dogs by Henry Porter wearing the number one shirt ridden off it by John Paul Clark in rated off six goals I said captain in the New Zealand team made eight in the past a very accomplished international worldwide worldwide player as plays taken down in front of the clubhouse taking it across on the near side Mad Dogs defending Caliente will try and pick the loose ball up Johnny Good opens his shoulders sends it goalwards John Paul Clarkin can't get there and the ball is backed out of harm's way as the Mad Dogs turn defence into attack Alan Fall pushes it up to that board I don't think we've had a single whistle yet brilliant to see such open play here on the Queen's ground in such fabulous condition the bell goes 30 seconds of play remain picked up on the bounce by Mad Dogs who come racing through into the territory of Ojo Caliente and it's now going to be the number two sorry the number four from Mad Dogs can't get it Will Emerson wasn't able to pick it up 20 seconds remain maybe 15 Mad Dogs on the advance Henry Porter doesn't manage to pick the ball up backhand taken in defense there by Johnny Good picked up by John Paul Clarkin who brings it across to the boards I don't think he's got time though to get it in there before that first bell and there goes the first bell what a chucker tremendous open polo for this Phoenician Cup a word a little bit now about the Phoenician Cup as I said presented by Eddie Arida, a life member of this club for the past 40 years, aged 84 now Eddie, a warm warm welcome to you in Beirut. He presented it in 1981 and the Phoenician Cup is named after his team the Phoenicians which he named after the ancient civilization of Phoenicia which is the area that is Lebanon today in the past it was a country of navigators and traders and so some history for this Phoenician Cup named after the area of the Lebanon who Eddie Arida is there today as I said a lifetime member thank you very much for Eddie for presenting this trophy in the past for now we'll wait for the second chucker to get underway it's two apiece first chucker has, fi has just finished
Sorry? So here we go, the start of the second period. Two apiece. The second chucker, all the twos on the board, on the scoreboard here at the Queen's Ground. Remember, play restarts with a 60-yard hit from that first spot where the first play was made. The only change is that now they've changed ends. At the beginning of the match, the winning captain in the toss has the choice of choosing direction or strike. And then after that, play will start at the beginning of each successive chucker from the same place with ends reversed. Johnny Good has it. Behind him, John Paul for support. Tucks in there. John Paul. Working his way down the field. Making progression. Tight marking up there. In there comes Anna Escobedo for Ojo Caliente, her team named after her home, her property in Mexico and turning it and bringing it around now for the Mad Dogs, told to use it white clear, now Mad Dogs use the ball and it's going to be Will Emerson who comes through, gets his stick, deftly little hook there by Johnny John Paul Clark, and he was just on the right side of the horse to evade the umpire's whistle for a foul hook. Now it's Will Emerson, takes the backhand shot, turns on his own play, good play from him. John Paul appeals for the foul, but Wim Emerson had enough speed and was accelerating away. No foul. Still, we've had not one penalty in this match. First chucker, not a single blown whistle. Great to see such open polo turned there nicely by Johnny Good for Anna Escobedo. She leaves it behind. Picked up now by Henry Porter for the Mad Dogs. He can't get a hold of it. Back there by John Paul. He finds fresh air. In comes Will Harper. Hooked out of it. Picked up now by Will Emerson. Fresh air from him too. Alan Fall now will take the backhand shot. Turns it nicely but doesn't have enough angle and it's met by the long arms of John Paul Clarkin. Emerson takes the under the tail shot. Sets it up for Alan Fall and here comes Alan Fall on the black horse Mozambique. He leaves it behind. Now it's going to be John Paul. John Paul will bring it around. Riding a horse called Impression in his chucker. Drives it up to the front door. In comes Will Emerson. Takes the under the tail shot. Nice play from him. Tries to get it up there to his number one, Henry Porter. Stick a lot from John Paul. Did Henry Porter have enough right of way? I doubt it. I think John Paul was established. Umpire's whistle gone. Two umpires, very experienced umpires, controlling this game. Roddy Matthews, Howard Smith. Howard Smith, the chief umpire here at the Guards Polo Club. Ed Judge, the referee on the sidelines. Well, that was the first whistle of the game after a full chucker and two minutes of the second chucker. And that's a great credit to the players respecting the umpires. The umpires letting it run unless they have to blow. So really good open polo. Now that whistle was blown inside the 60-yard line, going out towards the boards. Because it was within the 60-yard line, the umpires must give either a penalty 2 from 30 yards, a penalty 3 from 40 yards, or a penalty 4 from 60 yards. They've taken it back to the 60-yard point because at the time Ojo Caliente were going away from goal. This is a free hit with the Striking player John Paul Clark in required to have the intent of putting it through with one strike. In comes John Paul Clark in defended goal from 60 yards out on board the mayor. Impression. What a strike! What a hit! Wide though. He drove it all the way, almost out of the county of Berkshire, over the scoreboard, but it went left. It'll be a knock in now for Mad Dogs. Four and a half minutes, in fact, a little bit more remaining, as you see there on the scoreboard. Emerson bringing it in. Dancing around is Johnny Good in front of him. Emerson takes it forward, sends it up there, and unfortunately for him, he sends it over the sidelines. We will now get a sideline hit in. The umpire counts eight seconds, drops the ball down, calls play, and then the striking player in the opposition has five seconds in which to hit it. It, in effect, is a gifted shot to the opposition when you hit the ball out of play. John Paul Clarkin takes it now, drives it up to the front door, going to be picked up by Johnny Good. Nice little pick up there by him. Backhand comes in, nicely done by Henry Porter. But unfortunately, the right away not picked up by one of his teammates. Johnny Good turns it. Alan Fall comes in. Near side, offside. Anna Escobedo. 
Looked like she was fishing around, possibly there. We'll wait and see what our two umpires, if they can't agree, they'll go to the referee and judge. That's only the second whistle of the game. No, when it goes out over the sideline and we get a sideline hit in, that is not a foul. So just the second illegal play, rather incorrect play, let's say, as players go off to change ponies. One pony being taken off the field, everybody making sure that all their horses are fine and we'll get back into play a little shortly. A couple of words about here at Smith's Lawn. This Queen's Ground, along with the Duke's Ground down to the right, named after Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. These two grounds were inaugurated in a fresh state back in 2001 after they were relayed. First of all, having been played on back in 1955 when the club was formed. On the far side of the Queen's Ground, we have the Prince's Ground, which was inaugurated this year in May, having been taken out of commission and refurbished last year. That ground was inaugurated by Clive Reid, who made a very generous donation to both the Dash domestic abuse charity and the Wexham Park Hospital Nurses Fund and now the ground is getting into full fettle and playing very nicely. The Duke's ground down to the right which I just mentioned has a little bit of history that ground was used along with the Queen's ground during the Second World War as an airfield. The airfield was opened in the 1920s and it was closed on the 31st of July 1945 and down at the end of the Duke's ground is a little memorial opened by the Duke of Edinburgh on the 11th of April 2016, stating that history of the Smith's Lawn airfield during the Second World War. Play restarts from the centre of the field after that unfortunate mistake down the other end by uh, Ojo Caliente. But now it's going to be John Paul Clarkin who picks up the loose ball. He's being hunted down by Will Emerson, takes it on the near side, doesn't really quite connect it correctly. And the backhand shot is taken well with good angle by Will Emerson, but no one there from his team to pick it up. There's the backhand, came off the post, gone wide. John Paul Clarkin dominating there as he should do. Six goals, the highest rated player on the field. The next highest rated player being the opposing number four, Will Emerson. Will Emerson's brother, Mark Emerson, his practice provide the veterinary care here at the club. So it's nice to have an Emerson playing and it's, as I said, great that we have veterinary care on site at all our games as we do with an ambulance picked up and turned around now by Mad Dogs number three. Will Harper has possession, takes it over the halfway line. He's advancing into Ojo Caliente territory. Here comes the shot from distance. It's looking good. It's going to go wide at the moment. Cal Allen full, pick it up. John Paul Clarkin comes in. Strong near side backhand shot for him. Didn't quite get the length though he was hoping for. Picked up by Mad Dogs there. Number four, Will Emerson. In comes Henry Porter. Yes, he does. Henry Porter was the man who shot at goal there. Puts number three on the board in this second chucker and takes the team of Mad Dogs into the lead by three goals to two. So, play restarts. No ends reversed. Umpire counts 22nd. Ball placed down on the 60-yard point. The players must be 30 yards away when the ball is struck. Clarkin takes the strike. Good goes up for the pass. Emerson waits to hassle Clarkin. There goes the pass up to the front door. Johnny Good was up there waiting for it. Doesn't get a hold of it. Now he does. Terence Lent being marked hard there by Henry Porter to keep him away. Now Lent goes forward for the pass, as does Anna Escobedo. The ball left now by Good for John Paul Clarkin. Good teamwork by the white shirts of Ojo Caliente as John Paul, workmanlike, takes it down the field. In for the hassle comes Will Emerson, forcing John Paul to unload up to one of his teammates. And he doesn't manage to find anyone from his team other than the opposition in the form of their number three, Will Harper. Over the sidelines, the ball goes and out of play. Will Harper, son of James Harper, very preeminent in the high goal, aged 18.
not only is his father playing very well, but Will Harper is also playing exceptionally well for Team Vara in the Gold Cup. So it's great to have a father and son combination in the high goal currently running. A great opportunity for that young man, but he's also having a great game here today. As the whistle went there, infringement went in favour of Ojo Caliente. And it's John Paul from distance on the angle. Big, strong strike. Remember, although it's 60 yards out on the angle, that equates to about 80 or 90 yards lofted in the air by John Paul. It wasn't quite straight enough. They remain one goal adrift with a minute under. Actually, only about 30 seconds remaining in this second chucker. From the back line, Mad Dogs. Emerson has the ball left. Now he picks it up. Sends it forward for his number three, the young man Will Harper I was just telling you about. Look at that strength of that drive. Great pass up to the front door. Henry Porter waiting there to try and pick it up. Takes it on the near side. Good play from him. In comes Terence Lent. He takes the backhand shot under the tail of his pony. Bell goes. Not much time remaining. Maybe 25 seconds as possession is taken now by the Mad Dogs. We play throughout the 30 seconds unless a goal is scored under these new Covid regulations. And whistle gone there. Yellow card awarded. A little bit of back chat I suspect. Didn't quite see it but someone had a little bit of mouthing at the umpire. Probably a incorrect write-off. Looked like it. Not quite sure. Anyway, penalty has gone in front of goal, it will be played. Well, we're just trying to establish just a little bit of back chat verbal by one of the white players. I think the write-off was okay. We're just not quite sure why it came. But anyway, yellow card awarded. That means that the players had a warning. If he gets a second yellow card, he could be sent off for a couple of minutes to reflect on his sins. And as a result of that verbal warning, a penalty two awarded a free hit open goal in favour of the Mad Dogs. Emerson comes in, takes a little tickle. Has it got enough length? It just creeps over the line. Doesn't matter that it only just made it. And that was after the first bell. So that will end the first chuck, second chucker. I apologise. The Mad Dogs advance to four. They now have a lead of two goals. They'll go off, have a little team chat. So will Ojo Caliente. And we'll be back for the start of this second half of this tremendous Phoenician Cup. Played here on the Queen's ground. Good open polo. Thank you again to Eddie Arida for presenting this trophy back in 1981.
Then you come back. Where are you going to put it? Then he's the common case. Sorry? So, we're back for the commencement of the second half. Chucker number three, Mad Dog's lead, four goals to two over OJ Cal Ojo Caliente, the team of Ana Escobedo, named after her property in Mexico. Mad Dog's Alan Falls team, director here at the Guards Polo Club. Welcome back, Eddie Arena in Beirut. I hope you're enjoying your trophy. Waiting for a full complement of players. We still have one player of Mad Dogs yet to join the throng. Just being whistled up now by the umpires. And it'll be Alan Fall who will be coming onto the field. Just to remind you, under these COVID regulations, play starts with a hit from the 60-yard point. The same place where the ball was put down at the beginning of the first chucker ends have reversed. So now, Mad Dogs are going down towards the scoreboard. Ojo Caliente going down towards the Duke's ground and the Flying Barn Cottage in the distance. Will Emerson picks it up for the Mad Dogs. Over the halfway line, picking it up is that young man again, Will Harper, his horse Havana just eating up the ground, here he goes, could it be a great field goal? Oh my goodness, what an end-to-end -end run there, Will Emerson started it, and that young man, Will Harper, he's on fire, playing off a three-goal rating, just literally ate up the Queen's ground, Hit the ball beautifully, stroked it through the goal, the horse Havana. Five goals now in chucker number three at the start to the Mad Dogs. After the restart, possession from taken there by Johnny Good. He's over the halfway line now. Johnny Good takes it forward. On the black horse, certain still has possession. No, he leaves it. No, it isn't. It's still Johnny. He takes it down towards the flags. That looks pretty good. He got it. What a goal on the angle there. Lovely goal for the stick of Johnny Good. Riding certain. Long-time campaigner of his as he cut the cut shot, put it through the flags and run back now for Ojo Caliente. They move up to three and they only trail now by two. Plenty of polo to be played in this Phoenician Cup for 2020. Play will restart from that 60-yard point after the umpires have counted 20 seconds. Doesn't matter whether it's near side or offside. Picking it up now and taking it down there still is Ojo Caliente. It's going to be Anna Escobedo, but she's called off it by Johnny Good. Sends it up there for the pass, but it can ricochet off the pony. Good still has it. The goal scorer, Johnny Good. Leaves it now for John Paul Clarkin, who comes through from the rear. Clarkin loses possession, and look at the backhand shot there from Henry Porter. Sets it up there for Will Emerson. Will Emerson was just put off his play there as he good came in to hassle him, and that was great as John Paul Clarkin takes the play, tail shot. Didn't get the angle. Anna Escobedo comes in, hooks her stick, but it looked like possibly a foul hook by the number one for Mad Dogs. He can't hook somebody from the wrong side of the horse. Naughty boy, shall I name him? Henry Porter. Very ungentlemanly to hook Anna Escobedo. So it will be advanced up field. The penalty will be taken forward as at the time of the infringement when the whistle was blown the play was in just about at the halfway line so they take this one down the field they're going to advance it by beyond the penalty four position up to the penalty three position because 
at the time. They were right on the halfway line. The infringement deemed severe enough. This is from 40 yards out. And the opposition have the opportunity of riding across to defend the goal when the player hits the ball. However, they may not cross that back line until the striking player, which is John Paul Clarkin, has hit the ball. In comes Clarkin. Coming across, Emerson tries to reach out, can't save it, through it goes. Goal number four, just a one goal difference now as Clarkin put that penalty three neatly between the flags. Play will restart from the 60-yard point, 5-4. Plenty of time, almost four minutes remaining in this third chucker. Anybody's game. Ojo Caliente coming right back into it with two quick goals in the opening half of the third period. Ball dropped down. Umpire Howard Smith calls play. Ball is sent left by Emerson to Harper. Harper avoids the hook of Clarkin, but he gets a little bit put off his play. Emerson over the top. In comes Anna Escobedo to give him a little bit of grief. But Emerson comes in, takes it over the halfway line. Anna hassles him. Emerson has got support behind him, but he decides to go on, it his, on his own. Now he leaves it. Anna Escobedo took the little backhand flick. Picked up there by Emerson, who's told by the umpire to use it, which he duly does. He sends it up to the front door. Porter can't pick it up. Strong backhand under the tail by Johnny Good. And both whistles blown in unison there. As the player came across, drifted across that right of way and now the ball will be advanced up at the time they were on the advance sufficiently severe foul for it to be taken right the way up to the penalty for position free hit defended goal and after that first chucker where we didn't have a single whistle now we're having a little bit more whistle pressure mounting players making mistakes and now the opportunity is granted to Ojo Caliente to have this penalty for. If they put it through, they will equalise with Mad Dogs on five apiece. Ball being teed up by John Paul. Told you earlier on, married to... Nina Clarkin, born Nina Vesti, highest rated lady player in the world, plays off a three goal rating on mixed handicaps, a 10 goal rating, the highest possible in ladies handicaps. A great team, John Paul and Nina between them. Still teeing the ball up, I think waiting for a full complement of players to come back on. We have them now. One Mad Dogs player is actually off the field, and that's the number three, Will Harper. Now he comes back, rejoins the throng, comes from down in the pony lines there. 60-yard penalty. Play is called. The umpire, when he's called play, the player must take a circle. Can't do two circles, only one circle. When he comes in, even if his horse is misbehaving, not on the right leg, he must hit that ball and he must have the intent of putting that ball through with one strike. If he doesn't, he may take another play at the ball but not lift his stick above the level of the shoulder until the opposition has either hit or made a play at the ball. Clark it comes in. What a strike. He's driven that one all the way towards the Duke's ground, into the Duke's ground, but unfortunately not straight wide. And the opportunity to equalise on five apiece is lost for the moment. But they'll be back, hit in from the 60, from the back line rather, as it went wide. Emerson takes it down towards the clubhouse. Turns right. Still has it. Now he unloads it to teammate Will Harper. But he hit it a little bit too hard and that's allowed Johnny Good taking the big open backhand shot down towards the flags of Mad Dogs. But it was picked up by the Mad Dogs. Now coming down the field and advancing up towards the halfway line is Will Harper. Will Harper coming in there, takes it on the near side. What a pick up as he's ridden hard by Terence Lent. Harper takes it on the near side. 
great future for this young man playing at all levels this year and really excelling and showing his metal but he loses it now picked up by good johnny good bringing it round on the black horse certain still comes along over towards the halfway line he comes he's opening up still there it's Johnny Good. In fact, he's changed no longer on certain. He's taking it down towards the target area. Still there, coming on the advance. Johnny Good loses it. In comes Henry Porter and sweeps it coolly down in front of the ambulance and will pick up the ricochet off the boards. But he doesn't get there. Backhand taken strongly by Good. He doesn't get it to his teammate. Yes, he does. Picked up now by Terence Lentz by the looks of things. He loses it. Will Emerson. You can tell Will Emerson, he always takes that long arm half swing. And Alan Fall is the man who picks up the loose ball as they all stream over the top. And it's Fall advancing up towards the halfway line. Backhand taken there by Johnny Good, picked up there now by Emerson over the halfway line. A minute remaining, one goal separates these two teams, Mad Dogs, into the territory of Ojo Caliente. Emerson battling it out with Lent, who gets the better of the right off, gets the backhand, turns it for teammate Anna Escobedo, but she can't get there, ridden out of it, picked up now by Lent. Mistakes are coming in now, a little bit of pressure mounting. Backhand taken by Henry Porter, picked up by Will Emerson, as Porter called for the pass, and it was a good pass there, allows Porter to pick it up in the middle of the field. 30 seconds remaining to the first bell, leaves it, picked up now by Emerson, the Mad Dogs working well as a team, now driving it up to the front door, trying to get it to Alan Fall, who was waiting for the pass, there it goes, but Alan Fall was caught turning at the time, he thought they'd lost possession, and that's allowed Johnny Good to bring it across in front of the goal mouth, over in front of the scoreboard and take the ricochet off the balls. There goes the bell. Time enough to get a goal back. This is an important one. There goes the hit. Oh, and luckily for Johnny Good, his horse kicked it forward. An extra bowl of oats for that horse tonight as Johnny Good still has possession. We'll take it off the boards. Good. Under the neck, centres it up nicely. Is anyone there to pick it up? Alan Fall is taking away Anna Escobedo, protecting the ball. And it's out over the back line. Play will continue. There it goes. We play the extra time unless a goal is scored. So the end of the third chucker. They'll go off now with Ojo Caliente getting two goals back and bringing that difference now to just one. The score, Ojo Caliente four, Mad Dogs five. One chucker to run unless the scores are level, in which case we'll go to extra time. Okay, we're back for the start of the third chucker. 
here at Smith's Lawn, the home of the Guards Polo Club within the precincts of Windsor Great Park on a beautiful summer's day here. The final of the Phoenician Cup. Five teams entered it. These are the last two. Ojo Caliente, Mad Dogs. Mad Dogs lead by one for this trophy being played in its 39th year after life member Eddie Arida gave it in 1981. Named, as I said, after the historical location of the Lebanon, which is Eddie's home country in the place of Phoenicia in historical times. The ball is driven over the halfway line. Who's going to be picking it up? It's going to be John Paul Clarkin. Clarkin looks around. Loses it. Picked up now by Will Harper. Harper told a hit going up for the pass was Emerson but he didn't manage to get there ball is lost and it's going to be picked up now by Emerson on the grey Selina still has possession riding hard against Anna Escobedo that was great play from Anna Escobedo who thwarted the tack of Will Emerson great play from her allows OJ Caliente to break clear and it's Johnny Good who's taking it down the field on the grey mare Polesia and it's Johnny Good on the steel grey Polesia shoots for goal yes it has nice goal there from Good the equaliser in chucker number four because remember they changed ends at the end of that third chucker, restarting place, same place at the beginning of the first chucker. But now Ojo Caliente going down to the scoreboard. We've got five apiece and this match is on fire. We've had plenty of good open polo. Will Emerson takes the strike left. Waiting for the pass. Harper. Says leave it. Emerson sends it forward but he doesn't really hit that correctly in fact I think his teammate hadn't read the play gifted it for Johnny Good Johnny Good will bring it round nice grey mare called Polesia that he's on in this chucker takes it forward will tuck right still it's Johnny Good has possession look at the work that Terence Lent is doing on Will Harper to keep him away but now it's going to be the number one Henry Porter who picks it up for the Mad Dogs with him comes Clark in Henry Porter very young player in polo, the veteran campaigner John Paul, which will be the better youth against experience. Clarkin comes in and Clarkin will sweep the ball across in front of his own goal mouth. Made a mistake though, picked up there by the opposition, but Clarkin was waking, turned it around. Scoots past Harper, picking it up in support was Terence Lent, who's allowed Clarkin now to make the advance over on the far side, out of harm's way. He crosses the 60-yard point, but a little bump with the opposing team player number one Henry Porter John Paul Clarkin will just make sure that his horse and himself are okay I think he got a little bit of a bump there and we'll just make sure that uh, he's okay the ambulance there in attendance if required looks like he's got a little bit of pain in the leg he'll just get himself sorted out just to remind you five teams in this tournament of the Phoenician Cup been playing over the last two weeks the way that this tournament panned out Mad Dogs lost one of their league matches Ojo Caliente won both of their league matches and in the league stages Ojo Caliente did come up against the Mad Dogs and on that occasion, they beat them by seven goals to five. So will this be a reversal of fortunes? The Mad Dogs, went, they beat Bridge House of Twyford 9-3. They went down to Ojo Caliente 5-7. They beat Previz 7-5 in the semi-finals. Ojo Caliente also beat Previz in the league stages 7-6. Then, as I said, they beat the Mad Dogs. And then they beat Bridge House of Twyford 8-6 in the semi-finals. So... Will it be a reversal of fortunes after that league match between these two teams went in favour of Ojo Caliente at that time? 7-5, five, 5 apiece, 4 minutes to run in this fourth period. We will play extra time if the scores are level. We will not play extra time if there is a result when the first bell goes. 
hit from the centre of the field has been awarded to Ojo Caliente for that collision over on the far side. And we'll just wait for all our players to come back on and then play will commence. Great history of the Guards Polo Club here. Now in its 65th year, started in 1955 by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, along with serving officers of the Household Division. First of all called the Household Brigade Polo Club. It changed its name to its current format of the Guards Polo Club. Besides the fields here at Smith Lawn, we also have fields at the club stables down at Flemish Farm and also the club plays at Coweth Park. In all some 12 grounds allow a great number of polo matches. It's in a normal year, well over 600 are played every year. And this year with the COVID pandemic, obviously activity has been somewhat reduced. Play restarting from the centre of the line. A little tickle backwards there by John Paul Clark in clever play from Clark into good. Good. There goes Clarkin, up for the pass. But he's being, he's out on his own at the moment. And there goes Good, though. Good is the one who's going through the traffic of those black and green shirts of the Mad Dogs. Loses it. Picked up there by Fall, who turns it around. Clarkin has possession. Hassel there by Harper. I think Clark, there you hear the umpire saying clear black. Now they're told to use it. Clarkin takes the shot. And he puts it through. Nice goal there from Clarkin. And that was a goal that Ojo Caliente will be well pleased with. He saw Clarkin, had a look at goal, put it through from about 40 yards out, having been told to use it. Umpire counts the 20 seconds, drops the ball down. Play restarts from the 60-yard point. All of these rules just to minimise the amount of rollings there are. There are a couple of occasions, but we haven't had them today when the umpires can't agree, a plug ball, etc. But uh, otherwise, no rollings in the game. And when they do occur, full social distancing of two metres is applied. Backhand. Now it will be taken and turned around by the number three, Will Harper. Whistle went there. So when you're established on the right of way, you can't have a player turn. Whistle was blown there for turning across the right of way. You can turn, but only if you have sufficient room in order not to make any form of danger to the opposition. So they're pu putting the penalty down to the 60-yard point, free hit from what we call a penalty four, a defended goal. The ball will be placed down, and this is an opportunity for the Mad Dogs to equalise. They trail by one at the moment. Will Emerson comes around, settles his pony onto the leading leg. Not having a great hitting platform there. She's bouncing around a bit as he comes in, and that's probably why he put it wide. You do need to have a nice, firm, balanced hitting platform. Whistle has gone, though. Some infringement happened there. Did it come off a defending player stick? It did. So if the defending player puts the ball wide then the attacking players have the opportunity of taking the strike again, but they take it exactly opposite where the ball went out. We call it a safety 60. Same rules apply. You must have the intent of putting it through with one hit. So Emerson with a second bite of the cherry. Horse this time a lot more balanced, giving him a better hitting platform. He strikes it well. I think it was plucked in the air there, but uh, not able to connect. And the ball goes wide and the opportunity missed. Two minutes just over as the clock ticks down to that final bell. 6-5 in favour of Ojo Caliente. Clarkin from the back line. Good. Goes left. Little clever pass there. Good was waiting. He's got room now on his own. Advancing it up the Queen's ground. Still being on his own. Now he pushes it down the field. Tries to get it up to Terence Lent. 
who's waiting for the pass, but Harper's got the measure of him and comes in to take the near side backhand. Didn't connect as much as he'd like, but just enough for Will Emerson to make a little clever diversion, uh, deflection rather, and he loses it as it looked like Johnny Good, who sends it up there now to, whoa, and Johnny Good. Sent that one up to John Poole, who had a big ride off with the opposition, but right in front of those two players. A player came straight across the right of way, wasn't far enough ahead. Penalty awarded. Penalty four to White. So they'll advance it up to that 60 yard point. That player came across at right angles in front of the two people on the right of way. Didn't have enough room and that's why the whistle was blown. If he'd have been about another five yards ahead, maybe ten, then there would have been no infringement. But in this case, umpires categoric that an element of danger was involved in that play, which is why they advance it to this 60-yard point. Under two minutes to run, and the Mad Dogs trail by one. Ojo Caliente with an opportunity to advance their current lead up to two. So that ball is placed on the 60-yard point. The statue behind is called the Prince Consort statue, and it was given by the Daughters of the Empire to Queen Victoria in 1887 to commemorate Albert... Prince Consort, who had died in 1861. In comes John Poole. He drives it well, lofts it well. Oh, he's put it wide. Opportunity lost. Put it wide to the right. Knock in. Mad dogs will be relieved. They've got to get on with it quickly. Time ticking away. A minute to run. Still, that's plenty of time for them to score that goal. And taking it down the field there was Will Emerson up to Henry Porter. Mistake there by Emerson, allows Good to pick it up. Well, yes. In fact, it's Terence Lent. Lent now to John Paul Clarkin. Back goes Will Harper. He has possession. Takes the backhand shot. I think I heard Emerson say boards, but it was hit a little bit too hard. Good picks it up. This is all that Ojo Caliente want. Time ticking away. And Emerson leaves it now. Picked up by Mad Dogs. Harper, now it's Emerson. About 35 seconds remain. Clark in hooks. Little backhand shot taken by Lent. Anna Escobedo and a bit of a huddle in there as they were all turning on the ball. Everyone desperate to take possession. And Mad Dogs, unfortunately, have the penalty blown against them. And it's been awarded as a penalty four from 60 yards out. Just over 30 seconds remain. So this one, an absolutely crucial strike for Ojo Caliente. The ball teed up there. Same position as before. And in the background, that statue of the Prince Consort, whose history I mentioned, given in 1887 by the Daughters of the Empire to Queen Victoria. Crucial strike with not much time remaining. All of them just getting themselves organised. Marshalling themselves, ready. Thirty three seconds remain on the clock. Which is conveyed to the players. And John Paul commences his circle. As I said before, once play is called and he commences the circle, he must come in and make the hit. He can't take a second circle if the horse isn't balanced. Look at the way though. The mare that he's on, she's nicely balanced at the moment. Oh, I think she might be getting a little disunited there. No, she's still OK. In for the strike comes John Paul. What a hit! He's hit that out of the county of Berkshire and straight through the goal. And that will seal the deal. That will take Ojo Caliente up to seven. Congratulating sticks to each other in good social distancing fashion between Johnny Good and 
John Paul Clark in and now Ojo Caliente moved to seven after that tremendous goal by John Paul. Will Emerson restarts play on the grey mare Selina, but it's time ticking away against them now. It's going to be difficult for them to catch up. Emerson sends it. There goes the final bell and the score margin in this encounter for the Phoenician Cup final is OJ Caliente 7 and the Mad Dogs 5. And in fact, that's the same score margin that they happened in the league stages when these two teams met previously. So congratulations to the team of OJ Caliente, Anna Escobedo, Terence Lent, Johnny Good, John Paul Clarkin. Commiserations to the Mad Dogs, Henry Porter, Alan Fall, William Harper and William Emerson great game of polo we didn't have a single whistle for the first 10 minutes of play which is testament to how well these players played here on the Queen's ground so congratulations once again to the team of Ojo Caliente who take home the Phoenician Cup presented by Eddie Arida back in 1981 once again Eddie a warm welcome again to you at home in Beirut where he's watching this tournament aged 84 and this tournament named after his home country Lebanon which was in historical times the home of Phoenicia so for now congratulations to Ojo Caliente and it's good morning or rather good afternoon having just turned noon from here at Smith's Lawn the Guards Polo Club and the Queen's Ground